no matter where you are in the world. Um, I'm, of course, right here in Tokyo, Japan. What we're going to talk about in this video will be slightly startling to you, yet it does appear to be the truth. Now, as time goes along, more and more information about the um, actual ins and outs of the Fukushima nuclear power plant becomes available. Now, we're going to get into something that Mr. Akio Matsumura, uh, who has reported and done a little, done a little digging, contacted experts he knows on the actual conditions of the fuel rods at Fukushima. Now, a little bit about uh, Mr. Akio. He is a renowned diplomat. This comes from his own website. He is a renowned diplomat who has dedicated his life to building bridges between government, business, and spiritual leaders in the cause of um, world peace. He is a founder and secretary general of the Global Forum on Spiritual and Parliamentary Leaders on Human Survival, uh, with conferences held in Oxford, Moscow, Rio de Janeiro, Kyoto, and one more place called Konya. Okay, that's a little bit about Mr. Matsumura. He seems to be a pretty much a, a diplomatic expert and a man who has dedicated his life to creating a better world. Now, the first thing that came to Mr. Akio Matsumura's attention was something that the um, former, let me get this information here, the former Japanese ambassador to Switzerland, Mr. Mitsuhi Murata, made at statements when he was invited to speak at the public hearing of the Budgetary Committee at the House of Chancellors on um, March 22nd of 2012. I have the actual statements that um, he made. Um, uh, this is what he reported to um, Mr. Uh, Ban Ki-moon, the uh, Secretary General of the United Nations. I'll give you an ex excerpt of what he said. He said, I was asked to make a statement at the public hearing of the Budgetary Committee in the House of Chancellors on March 23rd. He said, I raised the critical problem of the number four reactor of Fukushima containing 1,535 fuel rods. It's quite a lot. Uh, it could be fatally damaged by continuing aftershocks. Now we all know that Fukushima has, has had routine, strong aftershocks. Uh, he says, moreover, 50 meters away from it exists a common cooling pool uh, for six reactors containing 6,375 fuel rods. Uh, he goes on to say, it is no exaggeration to say the fate of Japan and the whole of the world depends on the number four reactor. Now, he says the fate of the whole world. This is an expert, an insider a former ambassador, so he does have access to this type of information. Uh, uh, he says, this is confirmed to be the most reliable experts like um, Dr. Ann Gunderson and Dr. Fumaki Koida. Now he says, please allow me to inform you that, uh, of the initiative being taken by former UN officials who is endeavoring to have the Nuclear Security Summit take up this critical problem of the number four reactor of Fukushima. He is presuming an establishment independent assessment team. I think his efforts are very significant because it is indispensable to draw the attention of the world to this vital issue. Now those are awfully strong statements coming from any type of um, Japanese official, Japanese former official. This is almost unprecedented him to say this. So of course uh, Mr. Matsumura picked up on this and decided to investigate just a little more. So he took time to contact um, the top spent fuel rods expert uh, basically in the world, uh, Mr. Robert uh, Alvarez. Uh, Mr. Alvarez is the former 
Senior Policy Advisor to the Secretary and Deputy Assistant Secretary for National Security and Environment at the U.S. Department of Energy. Um, he wanted an explanation of the potential impact of the total 11,421 rods. It is awfully high number. As we all know, Fukushima is a, was a massively large uh, nuclear power plant. Now, uh, Mr. Matsumura himself said that he was astonished at Mr. Alvarez's response. I'll read you a little bit of Mr. Alvarez's response to Mr. Matsumura. Uh, to just get a, a feel of just how serious this is, uh, to back up the claims made by uh, Mr. the former um, Swiss ambassador of Japan. He said in recent times more information about the spent fuel situation at Fu Fukushima Daiichi site become known. He said it's his understanding that of the 1,532 spent fuel assemblies in reactor number, um, number 4, assemblies are fresh, uh, number 304, excuse me, are fresh and uneradicated. Eradicated, excuse me. Um, I said this then leaves 1,231 eradicated ah, spit fuel rods in number four, which contain roughly 37 million curies of long lived radioactivity. Now, the number four pool, as he says, is about 100 feet above ground. Uh, the structure is structurally damaged and is exposed to open elements. We already know this. Uh, if an earthquake or another event were to cause this pool to drain, this would result in a catastrophic a radiological fire, which involving nearly 10 times uh, the amount of cesium-137 released at the Chernobyl accident. That's pretty serious. Uh, he goes on to say the infrastructure of safety uh, to remove the material was destroyed as it as it was at the other three reactors that have melted down. Uh, spent fuel react spent reactor fuel cannot be simply uh, lifted into the air uh, by a crane as if it were routine cargo. So you can't just pull them up, take them out. And uh, he says in order to prevent severe radiation exposure fires and possible explosions, it must be transferred at all times in water and heavily shielded structures into dry cast where it can then cool down and safely be um, disposed of or as safe as you could possibly get uh, considering of what we're talking about here. Um, as this has never been done before the removal of spent fuel from the pool at the damaged Fukushima Daiichi reactors require a major and time-consuming reconstruction effort that will be um, charting in unknown waters, uh, despite the enormous destruction caused at the Daiichi site. Dry casks holding a similar amount of uh, spent fuel uh, appear to be unscathed in um, more safer conditions. Now what this gentleman, Mr. Alvarez, is basically telling us that the situation at Fukushima is so bad and so unprecedented that um, nobody really knows how to pull this off. No one has ever attempted this major type of uh, construction work, this major type of effort to safely remove the spent fuel rods that are still intact which are thousands. Now, what have we seen TEPCO and the Japanese government respond to this clear thing that experts know are eventually going to have to be done, right? Uh, what we have seen is silence. No plan. No talk of what they're going to do. They just keep it the same old, same old of cover up, don't release information, don't have serious talks about what to do. 
basically TEPCO and JGov are holding their breath, hoping that these spent fuel rods do not collapse and they're destroyed and uh, threaten the safety of the entire world. So, what is the Japanese government going to do about this? You have Mr. Matsumura, Mr. Matsumura, looking into this and bringing us up. We have a representative from the U.S. Department of Energy being very frank about the situation. And then we have the Japanese government being completely silent. So this begs to um, begs the question, is the Japanese government even discussing what to do? Or are they following the same political process that caused Fukushima to be so subpar in its safety standards that it could not withstand major earthquakes and major tsunamis and was not ready to handle this and why every failsafe that was supposed to prevent this failed. We know why it failed. It failed because of cronyism, corruption, um, TEPCO basically taking over the Japanese Nuclear Regulatory Agency by putting former employees into positions within the government. So we have total silence on this. This is a serious issue. You know, when I first read this and what Mr. Alvarez said, even I was taken aback by this and I've been following this story very closely for obvious reasons because I'm right in this country. I'm here in Japan. So when I read things like this, it affects me a bit more strongly than it would someone who um, is not living here right now. Again, when I have Mr. Alvarez saying things like this is unknown water, this is unprecedented, time-consuming reconstruction effort, all that brings up images of me, images in my head of the liquidators at Chernobyl and what they had to do. That was unprecedented construction. And that was time-consuming. And even today, you know, the, the liquidators, many of them are dead, uh, extremely sick, ill and suffering. Their children are suffering. Their children have had defects and problems, health, health concerns. And these men gave their lives for this. So, another question we could ask is the workers at Fukushima currently, what are they working for? What are they working on? What type of cleanup is being done there? Very little information about what's being done. Are the people who are sacrificing their future and their lives to try to quote unquote contain uh, the Fukushima disaster, what are they sacrificing their lives for? If this type of effort is not already in the works, and already being planned and carried out now, then the workers at Fukushima may very well be literally throwing their lives away for nothing. And these are important questions to ask. These are important questions to bring up. Now, even me as an independent journalist, I think expressing these ideas and opinions may very well be completely valid. Asking these type of questions. Bringing up these type of points. So, that's what I want to report on with this video and bring to light this type of information just to show you how far behind the Japanese government is getting on dealing with this. And just how deadly serious this is. It's not just going to affect Japan. If those rods collapse, it's going to affect the entire planet. The whole future of humanity.